Minnesota last week blew a 15-point lead. Now they turn to a 15-year veteran for help. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, CBS Sports' Charlie Casserly. Glad to be with you on the NFL previews presented by Comcast. The Vikings hosting Carolina at the Metrodome. And Charlie, obviously, we start with the quarterback situation in Minnesota. Benching Tavares Jackson for what Brad Childress is saying the rest of the season, going with Gus Farratt. What does that give the ball club? Well, I think it gives them a sense of urgency, number one, anytime you bench your quarterback after two games. And here you can see the comparisons. Certainly not fair. Gus Farrad's been in the league a lot longer. Uh, but you do see he has a better touchdown-to-interception ratio uh, than Jackson does uh, in Jackson's short career. Now, what it can do offensively for you is it expands your playbook. You can do more with it. Now, uh, the only thing I'd ca uh, caution you a little bit, uh, Gus Farrat, his first time he's ever been in a West Coast type system, so he's still learning everything about it too. But he he is a better passer. Uh, the guy can make all the throws. I saw him in training camp. He still has a strong arm, a quick release. This is a team that. Uh, uh, can usually give them good pr uh, protection. Brian McKinney's out, but they can run the ball and play action from there. It expands the offense. Yeah, McKinney's still out two more games with the suspension. Charlie, you were the GM of the Redskins when you drafted Gus Farrat. Uh, has his career developed? A, is he still the type of quarterback that you thought he would be? And it's the type of quarterback that won different places around the league. Well, it's, when you draft somebody in the seventh round, you never expect him <laughs> to play 15 years. He's beaten every odd in the book on that one. But what you liked about Gus Farrat when, when you drafted him was the physical skills. The guy had a strong arm, a quick release, a classic drop-back passer. He can still do all those things. I watched him in training camp. In fact, the day I was there, he had a better practice uh, than Traveris Jackson did, more accurate, uh, could make more of the difficult pinpoint throws uh, that you have to make. So. Uh, again, when you draft somebody in the seventh round, you're not expecting him to play this long. But he has had his moments. He's been to a Pro Bowl. Uh, he's been to teams that he's taken teams to the playoffs. So, uh, you know, he has a chance to help them. And he's come off the bench to do it. And, by the way, he has a good guy behind him to hand the ball off to, which would help him and Adrian Peterson. That could help along the way. Meanwhile, for Carolina, they're getting somebody off the bench, too. Uh, Steve Smith, the last two games, was suspended. Now back this week, um, Three straight thousand yard receiving uh, seasons. Jake DeLome said, can't wait to get him back on the field. What dynamic does he add to the offense? Well, what he does, it gives you a big play threat. And when you, when you see our graphic coming up here, the thing to focus on is the seven touchdowns last year. This guy can score points. That's what you want to have out of a wide receiver. Now, the way this works, when you combine a couple factors here with the offensive line, the key matchup to me for the Carolina Panthers is going to be the left tackle, Jordan Gross, against Jared Allen. If you have time to throw the ball against the, Car against the, excuse me, the Minnesota secondary when Peyton Manning had a little bit of time last week, you can expose that secondary. So block Allen. And the advantage then swings to the Carolina Panthers with Steve Smith. And, and those seven touchdowns were on a team that couldn't score at all last year for Carolina, especially when Jake DeLome went down after the first couple of weeks. All right, the other part to this is you've got a 2-0 and team in Carolina that's feeling really good about itself, an 0-2 team in Minnesota that's like a lot of pressure. We can't fall to 0-3 because there were a lot of expectations. How much of a dynamic does that play in this football game? Well, usually, uh, a lot of times I always thought the team that has to win the game the most usually wins the game. So where is the sense of urgency? Hey, it's clearly in Minnesota. Big expectations this year, 0-2. If you fall to 0-3, now you've got yourself a tremendous hole that you're digging out of. But the Carolina Panthers, they got a horseshoe this year now. they got a horseshoe. They find a way to win ball games. Yeah. Charlie likes to call it the it factor, and they've done it twice. They last play at San Diego and a comeback win against Chicago at home. So we'll see how that plays out. Let's see what the computer thinks. 10,000 tests, 10,000 results, all mathematical. It's the AccuScore prediction. Basically a toss-up at 52% of the time. They're still going with the 0-2 team. Charlie, you like the it factor or you like the urgency? It. You like it. It. We're going with it this week. It over urgency. So... Carolina Panthers in an upset at the Minnesota Vikings. There is an I in Carolina and there is a T in Panthers. There you go. Put them together. You've got it. He'll take them. It's a 1 o'clock start. And for more on this game or any other on CBS, uh, or excuse me, any other in Week 3, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Check out everything else all over the CBS Audience Network. For Charlie Cassidy, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.